Welcome everyone to another episode of Civil Textures. My name is Ferdi and today's video we're going to be reviewing the new update of Flow version 10.1. Now of course we released this update on early December and I had some time to review it and play, do work with it in live jobs and as well in my spare time had a look like on the new features they've added. Now we're going to be going through the most features that they have dated and we're going to add some let's say feedback to Causeway so they can update in our newer version because as you all know Causeway listens to us because for example they had the PD, some PDS box and I send them to them and they fix them in the immediate next revision so if one thing we know Causeway will do for sure is listen to us without further ado let's begin oh this video is not sponsored by Causeway So the nice thing about Causeway is every time they release a new update, what they do is they issue this PDF and tell us what they've updated and what's new. So let's have a look. So compound online control. So basically this, what it is, is that we can calculate basically the online controls, all of them with one button. So let's go have a look. If we go to our flow controls and oh, we opened the Christmas tree. I was supposed to make a video about it later on, so I created a Christmas tree. So. What follows is a brief construction montage. So let's go to our flow control and we have manhole S15. Let's add another flow control and actually let's change this one. Let's make design depth actually 0.5 and let's say design flow, let's give it 2.5. And let's do this one 5 and design depth, let's say 1, but the invert level is above that one. so. 83 so 8420 say 84420 so and it's a hydro break so now we have both of them red and if we hit calc all it should calculate both of them and there we go there we have it it calculated the flow for both now that's nice because if you have a complex control chamber you can calculate that now the next new thing they have is the manhole schedule now if you remember when you went to the design report and you actually data and exported the manhole schedule you were getting let's do it actually now save and uh, let's do it now flow template one let's say manhole schedule and yes we would like to open it now and you see this table here that we used to get export now they have it live and you can work on it. So if we go to manhole schedule, there you go, you have the table, let's make full screen. So you actually have the table and you can actually edit your figures from there. So let's say if this manhole, it's let's say it's a junction or a sealed manhole, you can switch it from there, you can switch the manhole type, you can add diameter, you can change the links that are coming in and actually you can view everything. Now, personally, I think this is great because the, when once you finish designing the whole thing, you can go and check everything. But I usually prefer having my manholes there and then having my links there. But if it's a more complex system, then I suppose you would like to see them at the incoming pipes so you can figure out the invert level, but Flow automatically does it for you. But let's continue. So the next thing they have is Agile visu Visualization. So basically, it's these three new buttons that we have here. So if we minimize this one and let's bring flow to the left. If we click on plan, basically a new window will appear and it will be our plan. And you can have flow and the plan here. In addition, you can just go view and display nose names and display links. And if you have zoomed in way too much, you can go view extends. I think you can double click. Oh, it doesn't. Uh, one function, maybe you can add the middle mouse double click so we can zoom extend instead of going view extend. That will save us like precious two seconds. But actually, this is very good because if you're working on two monitors, then you can have it on your second monitor while the flow is maximized on the first one. And the same thing goes for the graph. Basically, if you had drawn the simulation, you will have your graph here and as well as the long section now a feedback here would be nice that we could drag and drop these bottom windows and separate them from here because 
let's say we're using actually the plan right and we disable the plan from here and the log sanction we cannot actually minimize this window any further we can just increase it but then the width is just limited to that so we cannot reduce it any more than that so maybe in the next uh, future update we could just like have the windows let's say small like this have them down here and then when you drag them they undock and then when you put them back they dock here and you can have the buttons as well in case you close them by accident and you cannot see where they are so that would be great to see it's just more user interface stuff but all in all that's a great thing because that increases your productivity while looking at two screens because sometimes i noticed when i was working on the let's remove the graph when i was working on let's say on my links and i was looking here sometimes i had to maximize the plan just to understand like where they're connecting to and everything if i zoomed out too much i couldn't see now in addition if you want to free some nodes and pipes from here you have to go through the plan and go view disable extend uh, the nodes and link dimensions and it removes them as well from the one here so maybe we should have a separate one maybe you want to see the nodes here but it actually no, it doesn't matter. maybe just for here remove the dimensions and nodes and not affect this one or just have it separate that would be a good one to see on the new, new update so let's see what's the new update as well so we have the long section plot update oh the the highway highlight reverse flow so when you do your simulation well let's wait let's have to do the simulation a few moments later it shouldn't take long whoop super fast that's because of the multiple pro parallel process simulation but as you can see here flow the nice thing about it it could analyze multiple things at the same time so like the analyzes multiple storms so it doesn't wait to analyze one storm and then analyze the next one so it can analyze them all of them together and collates actually the results all together which is a nice thing take advantage of the technology nowadays like we have multi-process a multi-processor so why you shouldn't take advantage of that instead of threading them all up through one single processor so let's go to the 100 year oh we've got a lot of flows ah that's because i changed the discharge rate now if we go to our results and if we go right click highlight reverse flows then if there is you can see here that this is a reverse flow that means it's backing up see we've got some few reverse flows as well like from the alpha it's going back and if we remove the highlight reverse it unhighlights so it should appear on the outflow and flow cap so that's that basically no feedback on that and then we've got the long section. That's the one I'm actually quite updated. So if we go to our plot, and if we go to long section, and if we go, actually, let's refresh it. So the button that I did is the show unscaled storage. So if we click the unscaled storage and hit refresh document, you can see actually your storage there. Now, this is a link type that is simulated and modeled as a storage. That's why you can see it. But if you actually specify a storage on your system, so basically if you go on storage and specify storage, you can actually see it here as well. Now, the next thing would be the porosity, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, the porosity visu visualization. So now you can see this hatch here. Now, if we go to our storage and actually let's make the hatch 0.1, and go back to our plot and you can see that actually the hatch became way thicker let's say so it shows like the porosity is way less now if we go back to our storage and make it let's say one and go to our plot and just hit refresh you can see it's white it means that the porosity is one and water flows the freely like free willy the whale i don't know what you thought about well, yeah so the next update we have is the autocorrect oh no load and save so actually if we go to our approval settings sometimes you have some standard settings you want to run so what we can do is we can let's say these are the main settings that you want you can go save and save them as a flow approval settings file so fast 
or you can load one and uh, wait nothing let's go and tick all these boxes so i can show you so let's say this is my approval settings right now but let's say my company has some standard approval settings that we have to meet so we hit load approval settings and you can see ticked everything for us it could even check diameters and everything so once you set up your approval setting just hit save and save it in a uh, folder that you will always access where all your templates are and you can pick it up from there this is actually a pretty nice thing because then the company can set up an approval settings for everyone to follow and if they don't match up that means they need to work on the drainage network unless they have a very good reason why not other than that this is a good guidance like even for graduates so you can know what to look for so if they load the approval settings and they check like what's happening Obviously, it will be a nice thing if once we run the simulation, the approval uh, simulation, the approval simulation, basically the run test that uh, does for the approval settings, it will be nice to be done simultaneously. I know that can burden this system, but it will be a nice thing to see in the next future update. Now, the next update that we have is autocorrect. Now, we all have done it in the past so if let's say we i want to add a new storage let's say s and we just left it like that all we can do is just hit right click and it will show some suggestion for us i think at the moment is capped at capped it's capped at five suggestions because you can see s one two three four five but i have way more than s's and that but let's say if we add s1 it won't show anymore but if we add s1 let's say and make it wrongly you can see s1 s110 s11 s12 s13 this is a great thing because like if you did a typo you don't have to go back to notes to check what name you gave it and then go back to your storage and be like oh it was s uh, small because let's say if we go s one like that and let's say you, you wanted to say something oh that's not it but it was s1 capital the s was capital so it's a good thing it's actually very helpful because it's been many times that i went back to notes and checked like oh what name i gave it or i had to zoom through uh, the plan view to look at what it was so the next update is the brie 365 drain town test so if we're in the storage and let's say we're gonna use infiltration let's go infiltration rate calc and let's type some numbers let's say 25 and 25 again calc and hit ok and if we go to our design report and just hit refresh and scroll all the way down there you see pre365 volume so it shows the pre365 365 365 that's actually a good thing because some water authorities can be tiny bit tight about that the next update is and that was it The smart tools basically with the causeway still in the process of trying to get me a license so i can bring those to you that's how nice they are thank you so all in all causeway is actually surprising us yet again with their trying to focus on the user experience because they got the core principles of the simulation analysis they made us easier for us it's intuitive we can like we've got everything here on the left panel simulation settings and it breaks down everything and then we've got the nodes the links the manhole schedules so basically and actually you can just straight away go export excel and if we let's go to our tutorials flow and let's override this file yes we want to write it and if we go to that file there open it and there you go and sometimes what I do is instead of putting it back into PDS and export it, creating a manual schedule, all I just do is just copy and paste it in AutoCAD and voila, I've got my manual schedule. And every time I update the flow, I just copy paste it again. Then you've got your hydrographs, flow controls, simple as that. You put your nodes here, you select your hydro break. Now you've got the calc all, so you can calculate multiple ones. What I would like to see on this one in the future updates is in this we don't have to specify let's say node s15 multiple times we specified once here and then we tell it it's a complex control chamber 
and it can calculate like a combo for us for a hydro break and then orifice at the top for the throttle let's say that would be nice to see on the future update storage they impressed us again with the Bree 365 now so now the councils can be happier in accepting the infiltration stuff and then we've got the result approval settings we can load the approval settings uh, pre-hand so if somebody prepares an approval settings for the whole company to work on then they can just load it and check if everything's correct now and we've got now the plan and the graph and the long sections that we can put on our second screen so we can work with the 3d model always fast and super works and the nice thing about that is when the simulation is happening everything else is frozen but the 3d model you can still work on it separately which that one actually i really loved it's like while the simulation is running it's like you're looking it's like if there is any clashes or anything obviously that should be checked before the simulation is running so you won't waste time but yes and oh yes a class check that would be nice but i think pds already has that one so that wouldn't be necessary i suppose they'll be overburdening the software but you can't have too many uh, too many is always good so it'd be nice to see that we could get rid of this window and get more let's say workspace regarding our nodes and links or at least we can just minimize it even further and then pull it back up like have a button like minimize button because or we can just drag it from here like for when we hit basically we do it like that have it here and then okay we want it on my second screen there and boom have it and actually you can play crossing expand storage you can show the storage here as well and if you change the porosity as well here it will show so if we go 0.1 here you can see it shows here as well so they're smart they know what they're doing so i hope you found this review of flow 10.1 useful and now you can go in 2021 all unhappy to use flow 10.1 now I would like to thank you everyone for your support. We're reaching almost 200 subscribers and we have hit more than 250 watch hours. So thank you again for supporting me. This means a lot to me. And don't forget to like and subscribe and share. And thank you for Cosway for listening because they did a great job with Flow and I know they will continue doing a great job with Flow, but they did a great job in PDS. I spotted some bugs, emailed them straight away to them and they fix them in the new update. I'll be dropping a new video on the new PDS version as well and cover what they've done. Now, I would like to apologize to everyone that I haven't been very active in posting my videos. This is due to some additional workload due to the current pandemic and everything. So with a full-time job, it's kind of bit hard to find time to create more and more videos. My plan was basically three videos a week, but not even that was met. But hopefully with the new year, I'll be bringing more and more content for you guys. So stay safe and have a festive period.